up knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive Life is for living with you I've made my decision to family church it's so good to have you guys come back this week we have been looking at the armor of god and last week we were looking at the do you remember something about covering your heart the breastplate of righteousness yes it's the armor it's a piece of armor that helps us to remember to always make the right decisions right i hope that this week you have been making some right decisions and some right choices but just before we talk about what we shall be looking at today how about you invite your friends to stand up and those around you and let's do some dancing up 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 called savior have you heard of his perfect love have you heard of the one in heaven have you heard how he gave his son because i have found this love i 
yourself in the dance I did today we get to look at two very important parts of the armor of God last week we looked at the breastplate of righteousness the week before we looked at the helmet of salvation and today we're going to look at the belt of truth and the sword of the spirit guys oh where are my papers I'm looking for some very special documents that I got oh finally oh, it was really hard trying to get all my papers together what can I use to put them together to keep them together mm, maybe I need to look for Christian and these documents are really important you know what it says it has a really good message the first one says God loves you oh it's such a nice reminder that God loves me some of the other papers I have, oh, this one says, I am a child of God. What? And the others, one even reminds me that Jesus died for me. Oh, and one tells me that I am special to Jesus. What can I use to put these papers together mm, so that they don't get lost? Mm. Christian! Christian! Daniel! Oh, I need somebody to help me get something. So guys, let me get... Uh, can I use a string? I don't know if that will keep them together, but... Guys, I got a stapler! I got a stapler! We can actually put a stapler here. If I staple them together... I'm sure they will not get lost even if the wind comes and blows them away because the stapler helps to hold them together. So let me try and throw them. There we go. I can actually catch all of them together because the stapler is the one that helps me hold the papers together. 
And now, talking about holding things together, do you know the piece of armor of God that helps to hold all the other pieces together? Are you able to guess? It's the, it starts with the letter B. It's the belt of truth. There are so many types of belts. Like I'm wearing one belt right here to help me keep my pants up. And if I run, because I'm wearing a belt, my pants will not fall. Do you have belts at home? Who wears more belts in your house? So these are some of the belts that I actually have. And this belt would help me keep, sometimes I can wear it up here. If I'm wearing a dress, I'd, I'd wear it up here like this. But sometimes I can also wear it down here if I'm wearing some pants. But either way, the belt, wherever I wear it, it helps keep my clothes together and my clothes um, can't fall. If I'm running, my clothes will not fall apart. In the same way it's important for us to wear belts, the Roman soldiers who used to go fighting, they used to use something like this that looks like a, what does this look like? I'm getting to you. It's a sword. Use a sword to defend yourself. So they use the belt to not only hold up the rest of their armor, but also to store the sword like this. So for example, if they are fighting and they are running with their belt on, the sword will not be able to, to fall away, right? But not just that, if the enemy comes to attack them, they remove the sword and that is what they're going to use to defend themselves, right? So talking about the armor of God, we're going to look at two things. The belt, which is the belt of truth, and the sword of the spirit. But just before we get into the sword of the spirit, how do we know what truth is? Jesus said that he himself is the truth. And not just that, the word of God is also truth. So when we have the belt of truth, we know that, we know Jesus. To have the belt of truth, we need to know Jesus and we need to have the word of God. And then when we look at the sword of the spirit, which is right here, it's what you use to defend yourself against the enemy. We know that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So we use the sword of the spirit to defend ourselves against the enemy. So how about guys, you watch this story. Even though you can't see it, there's a spiritual battle taking place between God and the devil over the hearts of each person on earth. Since the beginning of time, God has been fighting for people to know the truth. There was a time when Jesus himself needed to remember what was true to be able to defeat the enemy. One day, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert. He was out there for 40 days and 40 nights without anything to eat. You can probably imagine that Jesus was very hungry. The devil came to Jesus while he was in the desert and tried to tempt him three different times. The first time, the devil could tell that Jesus was hungry, so he tried to use that against Jesus. He said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus quoted from the scriptures and said, It is not just bread that keeps people alive. Their lives depend on what God says. Then the devil took Jesus to the top of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off, because the scriptures say, God will command his angels to help you, and their hands will catch you, so that you will not hit your foot on a rock. But Jesus saw that the devil was trying to use the scriptures against him. So Jesus said, The scriptures also say that you should never test God. Finally, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. The devil said, If you bow down and worship me, I will give you all of this. But Jesus had had enough. He told the devil, Get away from me, Satan. The scriptures say to worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Because Jesus used God's word, he was able to defend himself when he was tempted. In the same way, the enemy will engage us in battle by tempting us to do what is wrong. When we feel like making fun of someone, lying, or doing something that we know is not what God says is best, we can use the sword of the Spirit to defend ourselves against that temptation. We can hold up the sword of the Spirit. Alright guys, from our story today we see that Jesus 
didn't have a sword like this one. This is a, a plant sword. And he didn't have a sword which was metallic, but he used the word of God as his sword. And when the enemy was trying to attack him and lie to him, what did Jesus do? He used the sword of the word of God to defend himself against the enemy. He was able to tell the enemy that he actually knows the truth. In fact, we see Jesus quoted or said out loud the verses that he had kept in his heart. He didn't have a Bible at that time and we don't always walk around with Bibles, but when we hide the word of God in our hearts, we can always use it to defend ourselves against the enemy. So how about you guys talk more about this at home? at question number one why do you need the belt of truth like this one well not this one that i'm wearing but having the word of god and the sword of the spirit right when you when you have the belt of truth you're able to know the truth of god's word that is you know god's promises and when the enemy comes to tell you lies about god you're like no 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 i'm not going to listen to what the enemy says because i know the truth and the truth is in god's word and the bible actually tells us that the truth will set you free it will also set you free from the traps of the enemy and why do we need the sword of the spirit in the same way we use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to fight against the enemy. The Bible is where we get to know more about God and more about the promises of God. All right, guys, question number two. Is telling the truth easy? Hmm. Well, sometimes it can be easy, but sometimes it's really hard, especially if telling the truth might get us in trouble for example, if you do something that you know you are not supposed to do, for example, if you are told don't go and play outside before you clean your room, if you go and play outside and your mommy asks you if your room is clean and you tell her yes, when it was not clean, that means you'll be lying to her. But you're lying to her because you don't want to get in trouble. Telling the truth is not always easy, but with God's word in our hearts, we need to remember that whether it's easy or not, we need to always tell the truth because the truth will set us free. All right, guys, now to question number three. When Jesus was tempted by the enemy, what did he use to defend himself against the enemy? So we see that Jesus used the word of God. He had been keeping the word of God in his heart. And when the enemy came for him, he was like, nope. He answered the enemy and he told him, man shall not live by bread alone. He told the enemy very many things about God's word. And that is how he was able to escape the trap that the enemy had set for him. On to our last question. How can we get the sword? of the spirit, not this one, but the normal sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and the tr belt of truth. How can we get to wear this? How can we get to use them around during the week? We get, to, we get these items by reading the word of God. Jesus said that he is the truth. That was in John chapter 14, verse six. Jesus said that I am the truth. 
and not just that he also said that the word of God is true so when we get to be in a relationship with Jesus and we get to read and listen to the word of God we get the sword of the spirit and we get the belt of truth and anytime the enemy comes to us to attack us we already have the sword of the spirit which is the word of God hidden in our hearts and we have the belt of truth and with these things we know that the enemy cannot get to us and when he comes we can attack him back and defeat him all right guys we shall be going to do our crafts very soon but just before we get there how about we remind ourselves what the memory verse for this series is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11 so it goes like put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the enemy craft time And today we shall be making the sword of the spirit like this. Oh. And we have the belt of truth. Can you see my belt? So I'm gonna go around so that you can see my belt like this. And my belt needs to be strong enough to hold my sword because the Roman soldiers used to tuck in their swords like that so that just in case the enemy comes, the sword is ready to pull out like that and they can use it to defend themselves against the enemy. So for the sword is what we're gonna start with. So to make this sword, what you need is, um, you need some duct tape or some cello tape or um, masking tape. Then you also need some cardboard. My cardboard was from some milk. So you can use any cardboard that you have around the house. You need some scissors yeah like this you also need um, aluminium foil something that looks like this anything else we might need so for the cardboard we're going to cut it into two pieces so we'll have a smaller piece and a bigger piece right so two pieces of cardboard i hope you have everything you have the aluminium foil some cardboard two pieces of cardboard some scissors and some duct tape or masking tape or cello tape right good so what we can do if you don't have cardboard feel free to use any other type of paper you could also use a plain paper but we may have to you may have to roll it severally so cardboard is easiest all right guys so step number one take your cardboard and you need to measure it you can use your finger to measure it we just need a small thin piece of cardboard so maybe till there then take a pen and you can have your parent help you draw or you can have your parent um, put their finger there. So put your finger right there and then you're going to do that two more times. Then join that dot like that. Do it one more time. Join the dot again. If you have a ruler, it's so much easier. Or if you have another piece of cardboard, just put the cardboard there and draw a straight line. Like that. Once you have your first piece, drawn out you're going to cut that out so let's do that awesome once you've cut your first straight piece of cardboard what you're gonna do you're going to put it on top of the other remaining piece of cardboard and cut a second piece just like this Once you're done cutting, what you're going to do is put the two pieces of cardboard together, just like this, and then you're going to glue them. You can use your, you can either use um, the duct tape, just like this. Cut this out. Then you're going to glue it so glue the edge so right there and do the same thing on this other side it's a bit sticky cool there 
we go. And then you're going to also glue the bottom part so that you glue the two pieces together. You can either use your masking tape, glue, duct tape or whatever other type of tape you have. There we go, perfect. So it should look something like this. And then what you're going to do next is you're going to cut out the top part with some scissors so that it looks sharp like this part right here. So that it looks sharp like this. So just come and cut this part out. Just make a V. You can have your parent help you cut this part out so that you don't cut yourself. There we go. So now I've formed the inverted V or an arrow right there. And then what you're gonna do after that is take your paper foil, aluminum foil, and you want to cut a portion that is going to fit your cardboard. So put your cardboard out and then just cut a portion that's long enough to fit your cardboard. So I'll cut till there. like that as you know the next part what we're gonna do is wrap our aluminium foil around our cardboard so something like this then shape the edges like that so that is a sharp side and then on the back side, add some more um, duct tape or cello tape. So the back side is covered and the front side looks exactly like this. So what we're gonna do after that is we need to um, put the more, more tape right here so that it's the place where we hold the sword from but just before you do that you can either cut it out if it's too big you can ask your parent to just help you cut it out a little bit something like this so that we have the handle you need to have the handle so just cut out the edge a little bit like this so cut on two, two the two sides the two edges so cut it smaller so that you're able to to hold it something like that Make sure you're really careful with the scissors or ask your mommy to help you cut it or whoever you're watching this with. There we go. So it should be something like this. So this is easier for me to hold. So make sure that whatever you're trying to hold is so much easier for you to hold. And then we're going to take the tape left, some more tape, a little more tape or cello tape and just wrap it around the edge. And cut off the excess tape just like this perfect so it needs to look something like this so one more thing we need to add to our sword is the this area so this keeps the sword part away from the handle part which I think helps to protect our hands so what you're gonna do take cut out a small piece of cardboard in the shape of a box like this and then you're going to measure the length like this um, just check how 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 wide it is you're going to put some markings so fold fold this into two like this once it's folded into two you're going to put it right here put some markings to know where the sorry fold it into two like this then from this side put some markings on what side it's going to enter from so put a marking here and a marking here and then you can cut this part out so I'll just do that real quick just cut that part only there we go so something like this so when you open it up it looks like this and then you can put your sword through it like that there we go something like this then the last thing you're gonna do in regards to the sword you're going to tape this up 
so that it looks very nice. So add some more mask duct tape or masking tape and just tape it all round. So something like that and then what you're gonna do the, you don't have to cover the back part but you can also cover it if you'd like you're gonna put it through right here it looks like that so this is what we're gonna use as our sword of the spirit I hope you've gotten yours all right guys so for the second quick craft what you're gonna be doing is making this right here which is the belt of truth and what we need for that is some hard paper it can be from a gift box like this or some plain paper like this or we also need some plain paper so just take a gift box or any it can either be a cardboard another piece of cardboard or a manila paper or some gift box um, that you don't use anymore so I'm gonna use my gift bag that I don't use anymore and I also need some plain paper like this I need some decorative paper it can either be this or colorful paper like this we just put it right there on the side. I need a little bit of ribbon or string. And the final thing I need is glue. Just keep your scissors around because we're also going to use that and a stapler, right? So I hope you have all those different things. So for this, what we're going to do, you're going to cut out a small piece that fits your waist. So you, it can be a small uh, piece of uh, paper, but we're gonna, it's going to go around our waist. So what you're going to do, I'm just going to start cutting right here. So measure, you can still measure with your finger or with a ruler and just cut out a straight piece of paper. And once I have my first straight piece, I can use it to measure my second straight piece, depending on how, how big I'd want it to be. Once you have your two pieces of paper like this, what you're going to do, you need to um, you need to measure your waist so um, just take it round if it's too small just add the other piece of paper so that it fits you properly so what I'm going to do I'm going to staple these two together you can also use cello tape and then I'm going to try it again around my waist um, until where it's fitting so mine mine reaches right here so what I'm going to do where it's um, the final bit where it gets to. I will just cut that piece out. Um, you can use a paper punch to make a small hole where you're going to add the this piece right here, the ribbon. Yeah. So this is the first part that you're gonna make. And then the second part is going to be these flaps. Can you see my flaps? So my flaps are the next things that we're gonna use or we're gonna make to add on to our belt. So to make the flaps, what I need is plain piece of paper just fold it into half you can have your parents help you do this cut it out into four pieces of paper but two pieces of so you start off with the first two pieces just like that all right guys so i have my eight flaps you can use eight, you can have 10, you can make as many flaps as possible. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight of them. So that's the exact same thing you're gonna do. So what you do is once you have your flaps ready, you're going to take them and you need to attach them to this. So there are two ways to do that. You can either staple it or you can add glue. For example, if I was going to add glue, I would take some glue here. I add a little bit of glue on one side and then I'm going to fold it on the other side to the other side so for example like that so you can do that for all of them or you can also staple them so if you're going to staple them this is how you do it take your flap put it up there like this fold it nicely and then you can staple it so whichever works easier for you, just work with that. So for now, I'll just staple it. All right, 
guys. So here is my belt with the flaps on. So the last thing I need to add to my belt um, is the ribbon right here, which I'm going to use. The second last thing is the ribbon, which I'm going to use to tie. So you can just take any ribbon you have or string. And then you, you can just add it to the edges. Make a knot right here. That's on the first side. And then take another small piece of ribbon. It's what you're going to use to tie around your waist and add it to the other edge. So once you make the knot on both sides, at least you can use that to tie it around your waist. So the final thing we're gonna do to our belt is decorate it. I have different pieces of paper. I can either use these ones, colorful papers, or I can use the crepe paper. Because I had used the color the crepe paper for this one. What I can do for this one, I'll use this other type of paper. So what, what you can do, you can decorate it like this. This is just a sticky note for decorating it. So there we go. Once you've done that, what you're gonna do, uh, you can add some lines to make it look nice. Some lines like this. So once you have it done like that, we have our belt of truth. And then you can wear it. But now since I'm already wearing my first belt of truth, what I'm gonna do as we say our prayer, take your belt of truth like mine, wear it around your waist like this. And then take your sword. Are you ready to fight the enemy? Take your sword. And together we're going to pray and ask Jesus to help us fight the enemy with the truth. So let's pray. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for your truth. Help me hide it in my heart and use it to fight against the enemy. In Jesus' name, Amen. I hope that you all at home enjoyed making the belt of truth and the sword of the spirit. As you go on into the week, remember to hide God's word in your heart and use it to fight against the enemy. Enjoy your week and see you next time. Bye-bye.